He's one of my favorite speakers, and I'm really anxious to hear what approach he's going to take to his topic this morning, judgment. Over to you, Claire. Uh, thank you, Reverend Michael. Good morning, all. Good morning. And I certainly join Reverend Michael's earlier welcome to you and to all of those who are in touch with us via the World Wide Web. And also, we are specially connected today to our other colleagues, members and friends of the church who are enjoying a spiritual retreat somewhere in the country. And we are knowing for them that as they create this space for consciousness building and this space for quiet introspection, they will also be grasping those tools that will assist them in further building of their consciousness. And as they build their consciousness, so they assist us in building ours. So it's all good. As Reverend Michael said, I was going to share with you some ideas about judgment. And I wanted to share it with you because it's an issue that I have been engaging with along my spiritual journey. And I thank you for the opportunity to share the ideas and the discussion with you on this issue of judgment. If you look in the dictionary, the dictionary defines judgment as the ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. And they also define judgment as a misfortune or a calamity viewed as a divine punishment. We often hear judgment being called upon in those terms. But the use of the term judgment, which I want to focus on this morning, is the act of evaluating and assessing or holding an opinion. Matthew 7, Verses 1 and 2 state, Judge that ye not be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. In a similar vein, I recently came across a writer who expressed in an article on consciousness building he described judging or making judgments as a combination of fear and ego. Fear and ego. So the question that could be posed this morning is, are we not supposed to judge or, or make judgments? Aren't our lives a constant menu of making assessments, conducting evaluations, and arriving at conclusions? Think of your life on a typical day as you conduct work, family, or other life activities. You wake up in the morning, you probably look at your watch, and you possibly make a judgment at that time, I'm late or I'm early. Am I going to do all the things I usually do before I leave, or what am I going to leave out? What can I leave out? Maybe I'll do that in the evening when I return. Or perhaps you may be one of those persons who has an unchanged, fixed routine. So you leave home for work or whatever activity, and you make a judgment on the route that you're going to take, depending on the traffic, or perhaps not. You may not have the option. Or perhaps you may be one of those persons who have a fixed, unchanged routine. You arrive at your work or a place of activity where you're going to transact business, and you make calls. You make a judgment. Am I going to make this call first? I'm going to prioritize this call. Am I going to take that call? Am I going to look at this document and make a decision on this document? Which is the first one I'm going to work on. So you're making judgments. You're consistently evaluating and assessing and making judgments as a life activity. You may go to do transact business. And you make a judgment on how to approach an issue, or which line to join. Because some of the banks, you can pretty well look at how fast a teller is working and decide which line you're going to join. Eh? 
if you have that choice. Or you, may, or you may make a judgment on what particular company representative you're going to have a decision to make or have an engagement with. So the point I'm making is we're always making judgments. We're always evaluating. We're always assessing. And we're always holding opinions of one sort or the other. And on my part, and this is why I have been engaging it in my mind for years, I make judgment on numerous issues each day. Uh, whether it be a domestic matter or what to leave undone. And I live in Stonehill, so you know I have a lot of choice about traffic <laughs> as which route I could take this morning to make it because this route is, is, is blocked up. And professionally, every document that comes across my desk involves a decision and an evaluation. Sometimes an evaluation of the persons or the professionals who, in fact, have created the document that's on my desk. So I think we have established that in life, in its ordinary and extraordinary day-to-day -day objective engagements, we are always seeking to make judgments. And the action of making judgments that I have spoken about are usually evidence-based, eh? usually data-based. If you're driving in traffic and you decide you're going to make another route, it's data. It's evidence. It's there. I can't stay in this line for the next hour, so I'm going to try another route. If you're deciding that you're late for work and you're deciding you're going to leave something out of your routine, that's based on evidence that I can't do everything, so I'm going to leave something out. And I make a decision as to what, what can spoil and what won't spoil, which one I'm going to leave out. If you're making evaluations on a professional transactions, you're making your evaluations based on data. I mean, if you are employed as a CEO and you go to your board of directors and you say, you know, directors, I have a feeling. I have a feeling about this. I think, I think we should invest $2 billion in X transactions or X companies. And I can guarantee you, every single board member would say, what is your data? Mm -hmm. And if you said, I have no data, I just have this, this feeling, I don't think they're going to be very impressed with you. Although in our own lives, we, our gut instinct and our feelings play very valuable uh, roles. But in the objective transactional life, evidence and database. So at this point, it leads me to, to say, let us go back to, to that Matthew verse. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Surely then we're not talking about the objective transactions of living our life. Surely then we're talking about how we interact and the personal judgments we make with each other as we interact. So I think we now can now start focusing on the arena of personal relationships, personal choices, personal interactions, and how we make judgments in that sphere of conduct. The Science of Mind text points out that karma is the law that binds the igno ignorant and frees the wise. It continues by advising, if we would wish our judgment to be good, happy, and constructive, then we must, must make a like use of the law. I want to repeat that. If we would wish our judgment to be good, happy, and constructive, then we must make a like use of the law. In other words, our judgments and our personal interactions 
must be equally good, happy, and constructive. Why then wouldn't our judgments in our personal interactions be good, happy, and constructive? Remember my earlier reference to that writer, a consciousness building writer who spoke about judgment? What did he say about judgment? Two things, fear and ego. So let's look at ego. There's a view that ego is either refined or unrefined. The refined ego understands our relationship with God. The refined ego understands our interconnectedness with the Father and with universal activity. The refined ego understands the I and I. The unrefined ego is all about the I. I can do this, and I can do that, and I will do that. It, the buck rests with me. I have the control. That's the unrefined ego. So when we make judgments from the perspective of the unrefined ego, we're wondering, why can't that person's behavior be like me? Why can't that person's view be similar to me? Why can't they be as correct as I am correct? I don't understand how that person or individual or group is operating. I can't understand them. And that is the unrefined ego speaking. It's about the I. Remember in the signs of my text, it spoke about the law which frees the wise. Our judgments in our personal interactions need to free us. It mustn't bind us. So when you say, why can't that person, or why can't those choices be like the choice that I would make, you're binding yourself in that statement. Why can't those opinions be similar to the ones that I have shared? And why can't the recommendations and the outcomes be similar to what I would have expressed? That's binding. But the freeing activity of the unrefined ego is saying, that person has a perfect right or choice to think and choose the pathway they want to travel on. Because you all know we're all traveling on different pathways, even within the principle of truth which we are all practicing. We still take unique directions because, thank God, we are unique individuals and we have unique pathways. That's why this world is so fabulously beautiful. Because we all have our individual roads to take, even within a consensus and a commonality of what we practice here at the center. So when we say, it's OK. We may share ideas, we may share opinions, but when we say, it's OK, your choice, your root, your opinions, your conduct are your choice to make and your choice to live by because, as in karma, your choices and your consequences are yours. And so we can leave persons to live their life, make their choices, and it frees us. Because sometimes, you know, and it happens so often in close situations, you really are holding tight and saying, I love this person, I care for that person, I care for that situation, I care for that group. And that's why I'm so concerned that they're not doing things this way. It's not love. It's not love, it's control, it's control. And control comes from fear, because fear and love cannot cohabit in the same space. 
And that is very hard. That's why I have been engaging that issue throughout my journey. It's very difficult to let persons be, especially those who are close to you. It's very hard to accept that persons can do very different things and have different choices about how life should be lived, particularly if they're close to you, because you say, boy, I just want them to be okay. I just want them to do well. Well, if I want them to do well, leave them alone. <laughs> and that is hard. But we have to work on it. And in preparing this discussion, it allows me to go to another platform of making that work. To free myself and free those around me to be who they choose to be. And remember, the best teachers in our lives are those who are closest to us. And they've been brought into our world to teach us so many things about ourselves and about how we need to grow. Reverend Elmer, our great founder, always says, be careful what excites you. I always say that. Be careful what excites you. Just like you feel it in your guts. So sometimes when we react to something that we are seeing, because we're seeing something in ourselves that we do not like and it's being reflected back to us, the more we free ourselves from judgment and from those opinions, the more we're going to be seeing the love reflected back to us. The more we disengage from holding others loving hostages in our world and leave them to live their lives and only give them one thing, love. Statements of love. If you're sharing advice as requested, you're giving it from a place of love. But you're not holding on to the results. And you're not holding on to the actions. And you're not holding on to whether they take your recommendations or not. You're freeing yourself to create a more loving space for you and everybody else in your world. Signs of Mind text points out that judgment is namely the law and cause of effect. Because the universe holds nothing against anyone. The universe holds nothing against anyone. The universe is there just helping us. Just helping us as long as we, to the degree that we engage it to help us. It's just there, helping us. The saying of the Father truly sends rain on the just and the unjust. Isn't that interesting concept to remember? The universe is here just blessing everyone. Everyone. We don't have to program anything. All we have to do is par play our part in this universal activity. Ensure that our, that our judgments and our personal interactions is well, well laced with a whole heap of love, a big dose of happiness, and a full recognition of the gift of seeing spirit incarnate at work in everyone, in every situation, in everything, and accept that the infinite potential exists for all mankind to contribute to this kaleidoscope that we call life by their unique journeys, by their unique talents, by their unique choices, and their unique expressions. It's a huge challenge, but it's immensely freeing for us to master this. And I really wish for you that you master this as I continue my own work to master it in my own life. Thank you. <laughs>